Ford Whedon House, uh, built in 1819, uh, and they have turned it into a museum. I believe it's the olden ho oldest house in Huntsville, so we're about to take a tour of it. I'm not sure if they'll let us take any video inside, uh, but I'll do my best, so goodbye. Now, Dr. Whedon was a cotton farmer and medical doctor. He was a widower with four children from Virginia. And when the Mississippi Territory opened up, a lot of um, planters in the original southern states caught Alabama fever. They raced down to this area in Mississippi and, and Alabama and bought up cheap farmland. Cotton depletes the soil very quickly, so they, they were wearing out their soil and they wanted to, to get new fertile soil. So he had several plantations throughout the state. The closest one to this house is where Redstone Arsenal now is. Now, Mrs. Whedon was a widow. She was from Savannah, Georgia. She didn't have any children, but she was up here visiting family. And they met and fell in love and married and had six more children together. All 10 of the children survived to adulthood. In fact, there were three who served in the Confederate Army and survived and came back home or came back and, and lived to be, die of natural cause this is old age. So in 1845, Dr. Whedon bought this house because the children they had together were school age and this was their townhouse. It was close to the schools, close to the square, and the church was right across the street, First Presbyterian. In the autumn of 1845, he took his cotton crop to New Orleans to sell and caught a fever and passed away. The youngest of the 10 children, Maria Howard Whedon, was born six months after he passed away, July 6th of 1846, right across the hall in the parlor. She died in that same room in April of 1905, and she spent her entire life in this house, except for when it was requisitioned by Union officers during the Civil War. Now, her name is Maria, or was Maria Howard Whedon, but everyone always called her Howard. And a lot of people think that's a pen name. She did have a pen name, I'll tell you in a few minutes. But we found a little drawing that she had done as a child, and it said, by Howard Whedon, age eight. And I've been going through some old correspondence, and we don't know for sure, but there was a letter that said that Dr. and Mrs. Whedon knew that Mrs. Whedon was expecting before he passed away, and they had decided that if the baby was a boy, they were going to name him Howard because Mrs. Whedon's grandfather had come from Scotland to Georgia and he was from the Scottish clan of Howard. So we think that maybe her mother just always called her that, kind of to honor her husband, that that was one of the last decisions he made before passing away for the family. Mm -hmm. So Howard grew up a child of privilege before the war, raised by her mother and older siblings and the slaves, and she always loved to draw and paint. And when she was about eight years old, there was a, a prominent Bavarian portrait artist that lived here in Huntsville. And her mother hired him to come over every day for three weeks and do kind of like a little art camp for her. Now we're at what's called Burrit on the Mountain, uh, where they have hiking trails and they have gathered a bunch of historic buildings uh, and made this area 
I believe they hold weddings here and they have a beautiful view which I'll show you in just a minute all right I'm going to show you the view looks like they're having a wedding today but let's walk up here and get a look at the view real quick That is a view. So here's Burrett Mansion. Pretty cool looking. So this was built in 1938. Now I will try to get some footage when we head inside. the house during construction. So apparently this artist Anne Bradshaw Clopton used to paint on cobwebs. So look at these paintings that are painted on cobwebs. Never heard of anything like that before. Pretty cool. So here's the man himself, Dr. William Henry Burrett, who had this house built. Yeah. So apparently they have one of his cars restored here in the garage under the house. I haven't been down here yet. So let's see what it looks like. Wow. I have it behind glass. But so this is what it looked like before. Oh, ghost. And now it is nice and restored. This is a DeSoto. There's a butterfly. <laughs> hey, Mr. Charles. He says hello to you all. Eden's house built 18. Hmm. It's like a cool old cabin. A little bit creepy. dark in here sorry guys yeah this is cool though so this says Joel Eden's house one of the few existing examples of the hall and parlor style floor plan 
and is believed to be the oldest log structure in Alabama. Huh. I think I see a ghost out there. That the Georgia Territory went to the river. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then um, and then there was like a major scandal. But the governor of Georgia was totally selling lands over here, and he didn't have permission to do that. And he got away with it for like seven years, <laughs> and then the feds finally caught him. We're like, um, you're gonna have to get those back. Yeah. So that's interesting, right? Yeah. Because I knew about land sales. Um, in 1819, when we were sitting, you know, right after statehood, 1821, that was kind of settled all this North Alabama stuff to the shoals, hmm. right? Um, so there, it's later, and there was all this stuff going on, and of course we had the Native Americans being systematically pushed out mm -hmm. from the beginning, right? So the Cherokee were here in uh, East Alabama, and they were pushed across and pushed across into Chickasaw land here. So we just came from this cabin, built in 1810. Now we are headed over to this cabin, the gardener cabin built in 1845. So this one's actually quite a bit smaller. It's like just one room. Single fireplace. Yeah. And then your sleeping area. Oh boy. And a little desk. Oh, and they do have a little loft area up here. And then a ladder. And our favorite little hot guys that we see in all the antique stores. And here's Mr. Scarecrow. A little garden outside that cabin we just came from. And we're headed to the third cabin. This one is called the Chandler House. Built in 1845. So, this is a spring house, which they would use to keep things cool during the summer. Because they didn't have refrigerators. Our pig, her name is Sweet Pea. Sweet pea. <coughs> we got slop for you. You don't want to drink that water. Sweet pea. Yeah, peaky, 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 peaky. Oh, you love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, she has shade in, under there. Rubbing it. Oh, yeah. She loves it. Oh! We're about to get muddy. Sweepy! So, this would be a smokehouse where they would smoke and uh, store their meat to help preserve it. So you see there's no windows, and they have a fire pit here, so they would hang their meat from up here and use the smoke from the fire to preserve their meat, because they didn't have refrigeration other than a uh, root cellar or spring cellar back then, which I guess wasn't cold enough. So 
here's the barn built in 1890 and then a blacksmith shop and I know you've been hearing it Mr. Goat oh no that's a lamb Hello. Hello to you. Hey. Oh, this is a noisy one. Hey. Can you speak? Here's their chicken coop. Hello, roosters. Oh, they're coming to say hey. I don't have any feed for you. Oh, that's pretty colors. Hey, kitty. Is it hot out here today? Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll let you rest. Just want to say hey. Just a thank you.